to this video. In the previous video, we saw the relationship between mean, mode and median. In this video today, we will understand the graphical representation of cumulative frequency distribution. We know that we learn concepts better and more quickly through pictures than through words. For example, while watching a cricket match on television, many times we see this type of graph and by looking at the graph, we understand in which over and with what score the player has got out. Using this concept, we have learned to draw graphs from the frequency distribution table in the previous class. So let's discuss it. On the basis of grouped data, we can see that the marks obtained by the 120 players who participated in the sports competition is represented as follows. So, can you represent these figures graphically? Well done! For graphical representation, firstly, we need to find the midpoint of the given class intervals. which is shown in the frequency table as follows. Now, plot the midpoint on the x-axis and the frequencies on the y-axis. Plot the corresponding points B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J and K of the ordered pairs obtained from the above frequency distribution. But keep in mind, that a point represents zero frequency, which comes in the class minus 10, 0, which is just above the 0, 10, and the midpoint of that interval, that is minus 5. And also plot point L, that is 105, 0 that comes just after point K, that is 95, 3. It is done in this manner here so that we can get the frequency polygon about which we have studied in the previous class. Therefore, we will join all these points with the line segment and obtain the graph of the given frequency distribution A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L. If you are asked to draw less than OGIV for the above data, then can you draw the OGIV? Let's see. For less than OGIV using the given data, we will construct the cumulative frequency distribution for less than OGIV where 10 to 100 are the upper limits of the corresponding class intervals. To represent the obtained data graphically, mark the upper limits on the x-axis and cumulative frequencies on the y-axis. Here, we will take the scale 1 square unit equal to 10 places on the x-axis and 1 square unit equal to 20 places on the y-axis. Remember, you can take any scale on either of the axes according to your convenience. Let us now plot the corresponding points A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I and J of all these upper limits and the corresponding pairs obtained with the corresponding cumulative frequency. And join all these points carefully. This curve obtained is called cumulative frequency curve of less than type or OGIV. In this video today, we learned to create a graph of less than type for graphical representation of cumulative frequency distribution. In the next video, we will learn to create a graph of more than type for graphical representation of cumulative frequency distribution.